Get ready for an unfair advantage over your competition. This is the Sales Edge Podcast, where globally recognized sales expert and trainer Joe Peachy helps you sharpen your skills for booking more appointments and closing more deals. And now, here's your host, Joe Peachy. Well, hey team, this is Joe Peachy of The Sales Edge. Welcome back. This is podcast number 21, and we're excited uh, we just finished a podcast on assessing where you are, reevaluating, kind of a, a, a mid-year checkup from the neck up. And, and today we're going to hit a topic that is really, really, really important to me. Uh, I, I, hopefully you're going to get some value out of it. And, you know, here at the Sales Edge, we're consistently working hard. Uh, to give you what you may need to get to the next level. As we talk to people around the country, uh, they share with us some of their challenges, their concerns when we're working with our clients, you know, uh, and we're working with their challenges, their concerns. We're constantly going to bring that to the table. Uh, I've been asked to mention the names of people and companies we work with, and I can't do that. You know, it's not fair to them. Uh, It's really kind of a a, a disclosure thing where people don't want to hear about themselves on a podcast. So uh, when when you're talking to me and calling me and say, Joe, we'd like to know uh, the companies you're working with. You can go on my LinkedIn and check that out. But really, um, I don't like to use people's names on our podcast. Uh, It's really not fair to them. And many companies we go in, we're signing non-disclosure agreements. So here at the Sales Edge, we're going to keep it focused on next level, uh, giving you an unfair advantage over your competition, helping you get in front of your target market. So today, we're going to be talking about something that is not high tech, uh, maybe perceived as low tech, which is whiteboarding. Uh, You know, I I love whiteboards, and uh, we use whiteboards with our clients, we use whiteboards in our personal business as a way of really seeing things visibly. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people use software, and it, and we do, uh, and that's a great thing. Uh, but for us, I, I like to see things visibly also. So let's get started. And, you know, to be effective, your business strategy must be put into action. In a high-tech world, your whiteboard still can be one of the best tools to ensure that your business strategy is followed. It will hold you accountable, reduce your uncertainty, and maximize your focus on what is important. Nothing will help you stay on track to meet your goals better than a whiteboard. And so in my office, you know, there's not a lot of pictures of me hanging out with famous people. Uh, my grandkids made us got a sign for me. No, my, I'm sorry. My son-in-law and daughter got a sign for me. And in my office, it says the war room. And so I believe everybody should have a place somewhere in their office, uh, somewhere that other people don't get to see with your whiteboards. You know, uh, I work with companies and individuals uh, really to help them have a clear business strategy and to set those benchmark goals, but they tend to get off track. You know, it, it's so easy to get off track. They have a big picture idea, and they haven't put together all the little pieces that help them achieve their desired results. I've really worked hard to develop this unique way of whiteboarding their entire business. This is off also turning our clients' business around and help them propel forward. And that's our goal. It's to help our clients, maybe that are getting off track, heading off into a direction, to redirect, get back, as in our last podcast, to assess, review, replan, so they can take the action steps to get back on track. There's a lot involved in in really perfecting whiteboarding. I'm going to give you some very good keys And this is going to help you. You can get started on your whiteboarding, uh, so to speak, strategy. Uh, (laughs) You got to come to my office. It's got it's whiteboards everywhere. It's great. You know, the first thing. Let's start talking about. So, how do you use a whiteboard? Well, you're going to need big whiteboards, and um, 
I first like to start out with, and I'm not going to belabor the point. I've gone over this in former podcasts on how to create clarity, but you're going to need your clarity first on your whiteboard. So what's your destination? So what do you want to accomplish? That's tangible. Your dates of, of getting there and why. Now that's done. All right. We've gone over that clarity. Now let's get to number two. This is where you set your goals This is where you create your business strategy. So now in our priority management system, this is box number two. This is setting up your complete plan of action. This is setting up your, your goals, your benchmarks. You want a clear business strategy to set goals for your business. You know, get them on paper, be specific, set deadlines for each one. A goal without a deadline is a fantasy. You know, in the communication styles that we went over formally, there are a couple behavior styles that feel pressure with timelines and deadlines. Let me reframe this for you. Timelines and deadlines are just benchmarks. They help you get things done in a certain amount of time. So rather than feeling pressure, these are kind of pl- this this is going to keep you on track. And how many of us that are listening right now have missed a deadline, have missed a timeline? Probably most everybody. That doesn't make you a bad person, but if you could eliminate some of those lateness, if you could eliminate not getting things done in a right amount of time, well you'll become much more efficient, much more effective. Now you want to consider your desired net profit, not gross. So how much money do you want to make at the end of the year? Do you have that written down on your whiteboard? That's why this has to be uh, kind of a secluded place. This has to be somewhere. Well, I, I was in a guy's office the other day. It was great. I'm working with him. He's a coaching client out of Tampa. He's got his whiteboard up, but then he's got um, he's got this thing from the Tampa Bay Bucks with magnets on it because he's in Tampa and he magnets this over his whiteboard. So the only time people can see that is when say his, his managers walk in and they want to look at his whiteboard and he takes it down. Then he puts it up and he looks at it himself, but there's certain data on there. He doesn't want people to see. Okay. Which is, which is totally understandable. So now once you have that, and you consider your desired net profit, remember that setting a goal is making an agreement with yourself. Did you hear what I said? Setting a goal is making an agreement with yourself. Just as important to keep your word to someone else, folks, it's important to keep a word to yourself. You know, we talk about this quote-unquote self-esteem thing. If you want to destroy your self-esteem, tell yourself you're going to do something and not do it. It will eat away at the fiber of your being. So by setting the goals and getting an agreement, it's just as important for me to hit that goal for me as it is for one of my clients. Okay, so you want to keep your word. Now, number the next thing down, after you set your goals and your business strategy, you want to assess viability. Oh, this is huge. When you look at your desired income, carefully assess whether it's doable. We coached a, a client whose company had set a very uh, had a high end product with a long selling cycle. In order to sell, she had to educate people over the course of time. This was not a transactional sale. This was a very consultative sale. It had some complication to it. it. It took time. It was education marketing. The company had given her a goal to hit and the strategy for attaining this. Well, we whiteboarded with her. Yeah, We sat down, we whiteboarded. However, when we crunched the numbers on the whiteboard, based on how much profit there was per unit, how many units must be sold to reach her goal, we learned that it was an impossible number. I mean, the numbers didn't work, okay? And uh, there wasn't enough hours in a day, days in a week, weeks in a month for the goal to be attainable. It was. It's important to set goals that are doable. 
Let me break this down in the simplest form. Let's say uh, you want to make $5,000 a month, and if you have a product that gives you $250 commission, you need to sell, okay, 20 to reach your goal, all right? Now, it's important to determine the length of the sales cycle. A widget is simple. It usually has a short sales cycle. If your product requires any type of consultative sale, uh, education marketing, it's going to be longer. Higher-end products tend to require more education to sell, more consultations. So consider the cycle of your sale when you're whiteboarding. Now, let's say you're in a direct sales industry, uh, financial services, uh, let's see, uh, supplemental health products, direct marketing. Here's something you want to understand. You're working with two Prong approach. You're not just setting goals for your product, but you're also setting goals on how many team members you want to bring on your team. If you're building a big financial services company, you're also recruiting. If you're building something like an AFLAC model uh, where you're bringing on team members as well as selling supplemental health product. So it's wise to determine how many team members you want to add a year. You know, network marketing, direct marketing is a monster industry in our country. And so this is something they have to be aware of. They have to be aware of, am I focusing on team building at this particular time? Am I focusing on selling a product? So this is why whiteboarding is so important. It needs to be up there in front of you. You got to break it down month by month. Now, let me talk to you about how I use a whiteboard to implement your business strategy. In developing this system using whiteboards, I started this out when I was a football coach. I would break down, uh, you know, projects, goals into small bite-sized pieces. As I viewed them written on a whiteboard, I could clearly see the process required when the process of what we needed to do next. Here's an example. Let's say you've, and I started this as a football coach because I kept charts. And so I would use whiteboards. I, I, one time in my career, uh, when I w was in college coaching, I, I coached a lot of different positions in college. And there was a time, okay, um, I coached running backs. It was a short time before I moved into defense. And I kept a chart, a whiteboard called violent running. <laughs> well, violent running was... How many yards did a running back get after they got the first hit? Now, for some of you, that might sound, that is the dumbest thing. We were looking to build mental toughness. We were looking to teach our kids that one hit didn't have to knock you down. And those extra yards would pile up. Well, I charted that and I whiteboarded it. I literally, whoever had the most violent rushing yards would start the next game. Well, on Sunday night, this got posted in my office. And my players would come over to, to my office, and the first place they would go was the violent running chart. They wanted to know who got most yards. It was visible. And that's the key to whiteboarding. It is so visible. Okay? So, so let's say you've set a goal of 20 sales presentations a month, which I recommend. Set up a whiteboard with 20 lines. Record a list of names of all your leads, either with a CRM, software, or a legal pad. Place prospect names and phone numbers. And when I mean software, you got your tremendous products out there like Salesforce, uh, Infusions. There's m many of them. And so there's some that are more applicable to your business. Make sure you're using the ones that are applicable to your business. All right, now you got the whiteboard. All right, place prospect names and phone numbers on a whiteboard once they have seen your presentation. I call it my core storyboard. So now that you have literally had a presentation, put that on the whiteboard. Put it up in your office somewhere that you can see it. Record each time you follow up. As the leads convert to sales, place them on a second whiteboard and then watch them fill up. 
This is exciting. It builds confidence. It also keeps you on track. If you're halfway through the month and your board isn't half full, you realize you need to push harder. The whiteboard doesn't lie. It doesn't make excuses. Okay? It holds you accountable. Now, we're going to stop there. There'll be a second half of this coming up, but I want to handle a question. I promise you I would handle sales as questions. Okay? And so on, I think... uh, Our next podcast will be the second half of whiteboarding. But let's get to the question uh, of the week. And this is from Zach in Georgia. And he writes, Joe, I've just listened to one of your podcasts that my supervisor gave me. I'm being uh, promoted to store manager. I'm excited. I'm really focused. I I love the company, what they stand for. Uh, the product, the service. Joe, how can I be a better manager? What can I do to be a great manager and continue to grow with this company? Well, thanks, Zach, for your question. Here's a couple things I would recommend. Number one, when you get this promotion, before you accept, if you have already, sit down with the person who is giving you this promotion and let them tell you what their expectations are. What are you going to be measured on? What are the benchmarks and most important things that they're going to determine your success or failure? That has to be clear, Zach, whenever accepting a position, whenever moving into uh, a, a promotion or opening up a business. You have to assess what is it that I'm going to be responsible for? How are you going to evaluate me? Hopefully you've done that. Now, once... You have that down, and you know these are the things, they're benchmarks. These are the non-negotiables. These are the things these people absolutely value the most. I want you to look at those things, and I want you to say, where is Zach strong, and where does Zach need to get better? If there's areas that you feel you need to get better at, I know the company you're talking about. They're phenomenal. They do a lot of internal training. Don't be afraid to say, in these areas here, I'm going to be a, need a little bit more training, okay? Don't be afraid to go and, and read. Don't be afraid to attend your, your own seminars. Don't be afraid to invest in Zach, okay? More than anything, Zach, this is a great opportunity for you with a great company and a great culture that would not be putting you in that position for you to fail. But... Failure happens to great people many times because they don't know what they're being evaluated on and they don't know what they need to do. I would say another thing that you can do, become a great student of communications. You're now moving into a management role. I will tell you, manage the processes, lead the people. And one of the most important things you can do in leading people is to become a great communicator. And I happen to know that the company you're with uh, has some online training on communications. There's great books out there. Uh, Don't be afraid to pick up the phone and call me and I'll give you a complimentary cup of joe on some of the things you can also do. But be a great communicator. I would say that's where you should start, Zach. Hopefully this has been value to you and you can this this will help you be very successful in that new position. And congratulations. As we wind up, look forward to the second half of whiteboarding for success. This is Joe Peachy. This has been the Sales Edge. Our sponsor is Peachy and Peachy Inc. Please don't be afraid to uh, send me an email with any questions, and that would be joe at P-I-C-I-A-N-D-P-I-C-I dot com. And put in the tagline, Sales Edge, or just give me a call at 407-947-2590. We'll have a complimentary couple, cup of joe. We're looking for Sales Edge to be a catalyst for your growth to next level And we'll see you at our next podcast. Have a great day. Thanks for listening. New episodes will air each Tuesday and Thursday. So make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and give us a five-star review. The Sales Edge is sponsored by Peachy and Peachy Incorporated. 
a firm which provides training, consulting, and keynote presentations, empowering corporations and individuals to attract and retain quality clients for higher revenues and growth. Make more money in sales. Speak with Joe in person by calling 407-947-2590 or visit www.peachyandpeachy.com. Spelled P-I-C-I-A-N-D-P-I-C-I dot com.